All right, hi everybody. Um, we're on to the final talk of the day for the Christmas lectures. So my name is Rachel. Um, I introduced myself in the last talk, so I'm not going to do it again. I am joined by Dave and Liam from the College of um, Wolverhampton, and they are going to do a little talk for you two today. So whenever you guys are ready, I shall add your presentations and off you go. Good afternoon, everybody. Season's greetings <laughs> from Wolverhampton College. Um, my, my name's David. Uh, and I'm Liam as well. We're going to be doing a talk about um, collaborative approaches that we take in FE towards games design and, and how we sort of encourage collaboration across um, the curriculum and how that can be used um, to develop the students further and, and obviously progressing throughout university as well. Hopefully you can see our slides okay. So um, Liam, just want to do a bit better. Yeah, so um, my speciality really is the, the 3D art side of stuff and I deal with um, the UE4, UE5, um and sort of implementing the artwork into there and some of the game engines and, and level design stuff as well and obviously i've got um sort of more the pastoral sort of side of stuff as well as a personal tutor with some of the classes and then just some of like the games industry and research units as well that i do uh, on the production side i'm concept art audio and i do pre-production research uh progression with the students so i'm a second year um personal tutor as well so i do all the ucas uh stuff with the students, uh, work experience as well. And of course, I'm a lecturer and also a personal tutor. So these are the courses that we have at the college um, currently. Um, so we basically start with like a level two uh, qualification. Um, our qualifications are actually UAL, which is uh, University of Arts London. We made the move from BTEX roughly about seven years ago now, um, due to the fact that they were they were bringing in uh, exams on some of the core modules, and with BTEC it was very kind of generic um, with the way it was set. So a lot of the kind of game stuff wasn't really catered for very well uh, with, with the actual qualification itself. So we moved away onto U University of Arts London, which is obviously a program which is developed by the University of Arts London and so it's got very much a kind of uh, approach like the kind of uni would have with the way that they uh, do the modules so with the level two uh, it's one year course uh, equivalence if you get a distinction on the level two would be a grade seven in a GCSE um, we then have an extended diploma uh, which is broken down into the first year diploma then the second year uh, extended diploma and again, um, that's an A-level equivalent course. So, of course, you would come away with three A-levels at the end of that. And we also have an HND, which is um, still BTEC. So um, that's the only BTECs we do now. Is It's a two-year course, and it's, again, it's equivalent of uh, first two years at university, doing a university degree. I'll say that the majority of our learners as well, probably on the level three um, and the level four and five as well, that, you know, this is where we take the collaborative approach mostly with those. And... You know, most of them do progress to staff uni, most of all as well. Um, and like Dave said, the UAL qualification is pretty much a very open spec where it allows us to design the units and, and sort of work collaboratively as well with um, universities and employers as well to find what sort of stuff they want us to cover with them. Um, and then we can shape the units around it, which is why we made the move to it and how it feeds into the collaborative approach that we, we take with the courses. Yeah, the biggest the biggest difference between the BTEX and the UALs was that the BTECs were very prescriptive in their approach. So, and also we found that some of the um, the kind of stuff like the, the software and that was very outdated as well. So like we had like flash units where flash is obviously now no longer. Um, so it was a nice move to go to something where we could almost pretty much build the build the program ourselves. So this is a little bit about the college itself. Um, we're due a brand new build, <laughs> fingers crossed, uh, in about two years' time. Um, we're currently based at Paget Road, which is why I put the arrows uh, on that particular one there. We've also got a campus at Wellington Road, which is Bilston, uh, Telford, and also there's an electric and hybrid vehicle training centre as well, which is in Wolverhampton. Um, the Paget Road campus predominantly will be moving to the new um, build, the new learning quarter, city learning quarter. And that's just an artist's impression of the new build, building that's going to be there. Um, but there's going to be a big, um, you know, focus on creative uh, courses at the at the new building. 
So uh, we're quite looking forward to that. Um, it'd be a nice uh, move, yeah. won't it? Yeah. So um, obviously we we are obviously recruit uh, from schools really, but we do also have mature students as well. Uh, but most of the students that we get are from school, so school leavers really. So obviously we have a kind of idea of what we would expect a game student to be. Um, so when we recruit, um, we do a basic interview. We also do a little task as well, which we set for the students. Uh, so at least we can get a kind of a gauge on how um, creative they are and what kind of you know mindset they've got and what they can come up with uh, creatively with like characters and stuff like that. Uh, it's also a written exercise as well because obviously you know written part is still important. You know I know most of the course is practical, but you know we do need obviously people that can write and get creative with writing as well. So um, what we're obviously looking for is what you'd expect really is like commitment and the willingness to learn. Um, we look for you know good communication skills or all the soft skills as well um personality is always great you know we always like people that are going to be the personality a bit, bit more you know, makes the group a bit more dynamic um basic it skills as you'd expect on a games course and then i put portfolio so you know there's no kind of you know order to that really that's kind of like just a general thing that we look for that that's our dream really in, in, in what we expect <laughs> yeah. to get from a, a student uh, coming from school um so and i think it's it's something that's it's quite challenging now as well with the with the covid lockdowns and stuff we had yeah. as well students have missed a lot of time and the reason we push the collaborative workflow which we'll get on to soon is so much is because we need them to be able to work with each other and i think schools yeah. there's such a focus on exams and such a focus mm -hmm. on working independently and stuff that they don't some of them lack the ability to work with others or just mm -hmm. outright don't want to do it um, and i think for games especially as a subject and an industry you need to be able to work with people now more than than ever because it's becoming so much more specialized in what you do um and you know teams are getting bigger and bigger so you know that's yeah. that lays out the blueprint really unlike university where it's more portfolio based uh, based work um you know coming from schools they don't really have the option to do many creative subjects so for us it's like the soft skills that we have to look at and and see if, if they're ready to do that yeah it's probably worth just mentioning about the, the, the lockdowns and how that it, it did impact on the students as well so it, it impacted on both what we call the final major projects which we'll come to uh, in the next few slides but um both lockdowns actually happened when the, the projects were actually launched weren't yeah. they so we had a bit of the first lockdown where we we're into the, the like just started out into the final project and then the second lockdown, we obviously came back to college and then we went back into another lockdown and it affected it again. So um, that collaborative, what we would normally have as a face-to-face -face collab collaborative workflow was really, really dis disrupted. And the way that the, the, uni the University of Arts London actually went about, um, you know, moderating the work, it was a lot different to what we'd normally expect. So it was based on a lot of like reflection and, um, kind of ideas rather than the actual product themselves because obviously it was a bit of a struggle for some students to actually do stuff at home as well um, so not all of them have got the the right kit or the right software to use um, so the actual qualification had to think on their feet really about how, the, how we would get around getting the students work off them so the kind of teamwork was kind of broken down completely didn't happen um, so it became a much more of a solitary kind of project for each student um, and as I say, most of it was based upon like reflection and, and coming up with like creative ideas, but not the product itself, which was a real shame. So a good two years of that was a massive yeah. impact on on. on I think that's why it's important now to push yeah. collaboration more yeah. than anything, especially with, you know, like I said, like the industry requirements as well. That you know the students do that from early, not when they get to university, just before as well, and, and yeah. get them ready for that experience. Yeah. yeah. So on the flip side of the coin. These are what, you know, the kind of attributes that we do see coming through. Um, so obviously we have our dream, but then, but then we have to come around and have the reality, don't we? So we have, um, you know, barriers to learning is one of the things. Um, as you know, schools are very set in their ways with the way they deliver stuff um, as what it would be college. Um, I think that kind of transition from, you know, going from school to being treated more like an adult is a big step for a lot of students. Um, we do see a lot a lack of soft skills as well. So like kind of basic skills that you would expect. 
you know, a person of that age, 15, 16, to be having um, dipping social skills. That does obviously, um, that's what we really have really yeah. with the lockdown stuff, really. We did, you know, notice the last few cohorts that we've had um, have been very different to what we've expected before. Um, socially, um, it, massively different. Uh, so it has had a major impact. A drop in basic IT skills we've noticed a lot as well. I mean, I've been at the college for 14 years now. You've been here for about five, 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 five yeah. years now. And even like when Liam started, he's seen a big change in, in students already. I've seen a huge change, obviously, over 14 years. Um, that we find that IT skills seem to be lacking a lot. Uh, just the basics, really. It's unbelievable some of the questions you get asked. You know, I think I'll give one one example. This, this, it's a, you want this one. A student had done some uh, work in Photoshop. And so I said, you need to back, because we use cloud, um, back up your, you know, your files to uh, to the cloud you know, cloud device. So we so basically we use like Google Drive and Google Classroom a lot. And I said, you need to back up your Photoshop documents to, to Google uh, Drive. And of course, this, this is where you kind of you see it really is that we got we had a guy trying to drag Photoshop into Drive. <laughs> I thought, what are you doing? So I'm backing up. I said, no, you, you don't drag the software onto the onto the drive. You need to drag the file. So it's quite, you know, it, it is quite, you know, kind of um, an eye opener really when you see things like that. Um, but we've definitely seen fewer few uh, portfolios now as well. So we do get a lot of students that are less of an art background, I think. <laughs> And more of an IT based, weirdly, IT based, um, you know, background. So some that have, have, have studied like uh, computer science or an IT kind of basing or technology, um, less of art, really. Uh, although we still do get a handful of artists, uh, you know, ones that have taken art and stuff like that. But it's becoming less of a thing now that we do see portfolios. And one of the biggest bugbears for me is portfolios is anime. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's everywhere. You know, again, it's some it's not nothing new, but it's something that I see all, all the time, and I've seen for many years now. Is that it's that kind of, you know, they do get taught traditional things in art, but it seems that they get a free reign with like doing fan art, which to me is, you know, schools need to move away from letting students do that and get them to concentrate on stuff that's going to help them in the in the future, i.e. coming to us, for instance. I think as well, it's, you know, like the collaboration aspect as well. Schools mm. are so driven on, you know, exams-based stuff and a lot of it, they don't get to work together, um, which is why the group-based work we do, we, we do from the off, really, and get them working in teams, doing stuff, because mm. it helps them build these skills so much quicker, learning from each other, because, you, you know, everybody knows no matter how many times you tell them to do something or how to do something, mm. they always listen to the peers more most of the time, and they'll learn a lot from each other as well as you. Yeah. So encouraging that is such a big thing, and... You know, like creative subjects at schools have been decimated a lot over the past few years. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they're coming to us really from, you know, we don't expect them to know too much, but the, the basic skills, you know, is mm -hmm. something we're having to build people more now so they can progress the university and, and still be successful with that. There's obviously a lot of um, typical subjects that are getting pushed more nowadays at schools, like the technology stuff, obviously, with engineering and, and that kind of thing. And I think they seem to see creative as a very kind of, softy softy kind of you're never going to get a job in creative industries it's not a real thing and i think that might that kind of you know mindset really is, is still shocking really you know games isn't a massive industry as as is like film tv all that kind of stuff so you know creative industries are a massive massive growth industry so i can't understand why you know schools are kind of letting that dip a little bit now i think it's it's a shame that's happening really yes yeah, so this is our approach, really. So um, we do roughly around about five months of skills building. So this is what we class as the formative phase. So we have something like seven modules that bring students up to speed with certain skills. And we just named a few here. So like file repositories, obviously, you know, a basic thing again is, is, is students being able to manage their uh, their own areas where they store the files or where they collaborative store files for like for final projects, naming files correctly, using naming conventions, version saving. You know, you got you have to drill it into them. I mean, it, it doesn't come straight away with them. They don't they don't see it as being important. But you know, we all know like working in games that it is a huge thing that you do need to all be singing off the same hymn sheet with the way you store or create files or 
you know, nine them and stuff. Uh, project management te techniques, you know, we use Trello a lot. We use like Gantt charts to um, and burn down charts to to kind of manage the the workflow. Um, again, it's probably something that I've never done before. Um, you know, there's probably not a lot of collaborative stuff in schools, is there? I wouldn't have thought with like, I know remember, obviously it's been a long time since I've been at school, but <laughs> you know, no jokes. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, yeah, I don't think collaborative uh, work working is, is something that schools really see much of, to be honest. Of course, we have to do the, the research stuff. So, you know, looking into the industry itself, looking at the market, um, doing specific uh, games based research for their projects, uh, industry practices. So having an awareness of job roles, what job roles are more uh, desirable, which ones are more challenging to get into, um, kind of like, you know, expected salaries, expected kind of working um, environments and that, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Pre-production elements, so conceptual stuff, uh, working through to like a standard GDD um, with the game design stuff. And then obviously workflow, you know, if they're working with a team, they need to understand what their importance is as a role and, um, you know, how they work together and how that, that work that they create helps the whole team and what it does for the products itself. And then going into production, sketchbook work, concept art, work with audio, uh, 3D art, game engine work. Obviously, we use UE uh, for going into five now. Um, functionality, blueprints, that kind of thing. Into a testing phase and then marketing the product itself. And one of the biggest things that the UAL really uh, like to see is that students are continually um, looking at their own um, work, looking at the way they're working, the, 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 what they're producing and, you know, are they meeting the criteria, what would be expected of, of a professional really? So reflective practice is something that the, the UAL are very keen on. So we do keep like a electronic yeah. journals, don't we? It's like that, that five months we've got a skill building. So it's like, you know, the UAL qualification, we have like um, seven units, isn't it? And then there's there's one for the FMP and, you know, the, the skill building units are the ones where it's really hands on with us. And obviously we're, we're taking up the units. We'll still do group work in that time for when it's appropriate. And um, it's all about getting them used to the software and, and up to standards of everything. And, and, you know, throughout that period, they'll make a couple of games. They'll, um, you know, have a go doing 3D art um, and depending on what level they're on and all the different engines and experiments and all those. So it's giving them the skills in order to, to gear up and then do something themselves within a group. And, and we find obviously the level three um, across two years for that you know, each year at the beginning, they'll have that skill building period, then they go into the group projects and you see the growth in the group projects as they're doing it. And obviously year on year, the projects get better and better. And, you know, hopefully by the time they get to university and, you know, we catch up with some of the guys that have been to staffs or other universities and, you know, the work they're producing is really good. And, you know, they say doing it, the collaborative stuff that they did with us, when they end up doing the club units at university, they, they fit into that seamlessly and they find it something that's fairly easy to do. So we've got those seven modules that build them up and get them ready for a project. And obviously, but then we've got the main one module, which is the, the, is the final project we call it FMP. Um, so what we're looking to, to kind of make students more so is being obviously independent. It's not to say that we cut the, the reins and we, we just sit at the front and not do anything. We do, obviously, we have to. But it's to get them more independent and obviously working with each other, working collaboratively. Um, you know, choosing a role, they do get to choose their role. Um, and, you know, what we try and do with the teams is to try and fit teams together. So there is a good balance of skills. So you'll have like somebody that's maybe doing um, like the environment stuff in Unreal, then you'll have somebody that might be modeling props and stuff like that. Then you might have um, somebody that's uh, focused on audio and that kind of thing. So it brings together you know a better project it's something we've been we've not been doing from the start with the UAL but we certainly have been doing it for about three four years now um and then obviously you know getting students to try and take the lead some are very keen on doing that others aren't so they don't feel like it's they want to be telling people what to do it's, it's a big learning you know, curve for them so. really and you know the whole FMP is you know give them the the ability to work in a team individually and say okay you tell us what you want to work on now is i think at level three especially is, is a lot of responsibility to give a student but a lot of them run with it and they do some really fantastic work and um you know giving them that 
you know the the ability to do that mm. is something that is they're not used to at school they don't get the option to to take ownership of their learning like that um and you know just collaboratively working some of the projects they are really good for the level that that we have don't we at level three yeah i mean just looking at some of the comments um i think i recognize some of our students yes. <laughs> i think it's logan and uh, <laughs> toby. toby hi toby logan um yeah um just looking at the um comments on stuff what staffs have said it's like it's interesting because you seem to be running into similar problems as we do with applicants especially with their soft skills and portfolio yeah i think it's i don't think it's just um it's just us i think it's a global thing really with with uh, games courses i think the problem and we obviously come to it don't we a bit later on about you know the kind of um you know how, how there's like important things they should be doing at school in order to the games and stuff like that <laughs> you read some of the comments yeah so, yeah, really. yeah. But it's, I think you've said there, like at staffs, like, yeah. you know, what something working with university is more something we've considered. You know, like we do, um, obviously, Sean and Dave at the uni come and do talks yeah, um, yeah. here as well about, you know, getting into industry and, you know, Vincent University as well. But, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's something we're always more open to as always working with the university and seeing what, what yeah. you guys would want us to do more yeah. of. And, you know, we can, that helps us prepare the students better for when they reach yeah. university. And obviously, we take feedback from past learners and stuff as well. You know, what would you like us to have covered with you? Yeah. Um, and obviously this group project the FMP is something that not only from that perspective but we've done a lot of work experience which Dave will get onto as well um, with studios like Flix and Rare and stuff as well and, and some of the developers there said you know they want the students working in groups and, and taking ownership of that and, and doing their own roles and I think industry is so specialised now as well um, in the role that you have is that you need to specialise from early Yeah. And, and I think doing it at level three because it's so generic normally and then being able to pick this is what I want to work on for the project in a team and focus on this. Yeah. It gives them that inspiration and that motivation to go, this is what I want to do at university. Mm -hmm. After all, this is the career I want to go into doing, whether yeah. it's 3D art programming, it allows them to to get that knowledge mm -hmm. and, and really focus on something they're interested in. It is difficult with, with colleges, obviously, because like with the games course, it, it, it's very kind of broad, you know, it, it's learning all those skills and then the, it's not likely that everybody's going to enjoy every skill. So I think obviously having that FMP, uh, the final project, is is a great thing for it because it allows them then to kind of specialise, like Liam says. Um, so yeah, taking the lead, being encouraged to help each other as well, rather than coming to us and going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know um, making making critical decisions. You know, I think I think that they they have to take ownership of us and obviously you know be responsible for making certain decisions i think it's about making you know the step up from university from mm -hmm. school to college is quite a big step up for some of them but yeah. going to university is even much sometimes and i think it's about like smoothing that out so it's more of like a smooth transition from from each mm -hmm. one so they take a step into it and they don't feel mm -hmm. overwhelmed as much That's it. and again reflection is a big thing as well yeah. with, with, with the projects as well yes yeah, so we obviously we're looking at what does work really and what doesn't and maybe does in some cases so try to break this down as much as we can so we feel that having the brief and we use a topic and a buzzword don't we for, for the briefs a lot um which obviously some of the students that are with us previously that are on me today would know because they, yeah. they remember doing it and how they interpret it is, is important as well. You get all kinds of interpretations with, with different words, which is nice to see. And um, the choice of role and specialisms and how that feeds into projects always seems to work really well as well. And of course, the practical elements generally. In some cases where it doesn't doesn't work, taking the lead, as I say, some people are quite keen to do that and quite confident to do it, but there's a lot that won't, that they, they would rather be told and led, if you know what I mean. I think what we try and do is swap that around. We're definitely going to do this this time around again is to try and, you know, maybe we kind of take the lead to begin with then pass it on to yeah. the next person, then give them a few weeks of doing that. And then it will be passed on to the next person. So, we, you know, we, every year we do try and change it up a little bit, don't we? I think one of the things we spoke about this year is, uh, and this has come from the students as well. So we do obviously listen to what they say, is the second year is there's, there's 10, 12 of them in that group. And they've said, rather than doing small teams, why don't we do one big game together? And I thought, well, yeah, that might work, to be honest. So, you know, where you it's might... It's a risk each year, though, it isn't is, it? Because yeah, yeah. you're reflecting on it and you're but thinking, it's good, okay, what worked? Because you get work. us reflecting it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think it's a good thing to try. Um, again, it's something we haven't tried, and I think I'm quite keen to do yeah. that, you know. Um, 
so you might have more than one person doing modeling and stuff like that. I think it's, it's important in, in any education setting that you're mixing up what you're doing each year and not keeping it the same for yourself as well because you know you you need to keep it fresh and, and keep evolving with what you're doing and I think Chris has asked the question what do you think mm -hmm. the main challenge in transitioning to university is what comes up commonly I think from what I've heard is a lot of it's the more independent working because mm -hmm. obviously the, the higher up you go in the levels mm -hmm. that you do at university obviously there's less sort of spoon feeding of information yeah. and I think a lot of it is I think self-managing time and I think also the transition mm -hmm. to the, the higher level of work where they're doing more on their own and that's why we take this emphasis with the group projects more now as well so it gets them used to researching stuff in their own time um, and balancing that work outside of mm. the time they're in college. Yeah there's a question from Chris, Chris there he says what do you think the main challenges to going into university from college what comes up coming? Yeah that's what I was just... Yeah so I think um, like Liam just said you know I think I think one of the things is obviously you know being open to working with others is one of the things I think there are a lot of you know there are some standout students that will be quite you know confident but then there's a lot of them that are quite introvert yeah you know so i think that, you know taking that extra step into university then is going to be a massive massive challenge for some yeah. of them you know there's a part of games as well it's a subject yeah. where you're going to get that balance of personalities where some people really don't want to work with other people yeah. but i think it's you know that's where the research units into industry come in as well that we do because it's you know you've got to be aware that you can't make a game on your own really anymore I mean, you can, but you'd, you'd be on your knees doing it with the yeah. amount of work it's required. So, you know, yeah. you've got to be open to working with other people. Yeah. <clears throat> can it be fixed then? So, obviously, we, we're constantly thinking of how we can improve stuff, like we've said. Um, but obviously, there's some factors that go into it, really. So, you know, if it's in, an intrinsic thing, you can't change who you are, you won't change who you are, is one of the things, you know. I think certain people are, you know, open to be more flexible and you know trying trying different ways to do things or maybe even building the confidence i think confidence is one of the biggest things if i've got to be honest with you uh extrinsic things so basically identifying and understand rewards and the importance of that in the future yeah. you know we don't you know give them presents every five minutes but we do try to kind of you know not you know dangle the carrots i suppose if you like you know get them to i leave. think the main thing is giving them the motivation for the mm. career they want and i think that's what the group project does where they they find the specialists and the skill building units is always like a mixture of mm. i don't like this i like this and they'll find the passion fairly quickly with what they like doing um and then it's about letting them run with that and and that builds the motivation to go okay mm. i want to develop this i want to push myself outside of college and do more and more work because mm -hmm. everybody knows it takes a lot of work to break into the industry yeah. and you know it's all about your portfolio and what you can build from that and you know finding that passion from early allows you to be that step ahead of other people mm -hmm. um, and that's what we try and get through to them yeah that's a big one I, I mentioned earlier, wasn't it? There's the significance, nothing of significance from schools and our college. I mean, as I say, we do get a lot of students that don't come through with anything that really relates to the games in many ways. Um, some some do, some come with like they've done a bit of programming in Scratch or they've done a little bit of like Python. And, yeah, it's and very, stuff very like basic that, stuff. You know, but it's, I think it's, it's like we said earlier, the soft skills from schools seem to be lacking more and more each mm -hmm. year and something we're having to develop ourselves yeah. a lot earlier on. Yeah. I think the uh, you know the, the subject but also like solid careers advice i remember careers advice back when i was at school which you know, was obviously a long time ago but it was never brilliant you know it was always you know a bit lackluster and i get i dare say it's not any better nowadays i don't know but um i think i think what you get is that you'll even like some of our admissions that are like yeah. you know what do you like doing and it's like oh i like playing games oh i just got the subject for you yeah I think that's the biggest thing is like you know which comes down to the, the the next one doesn't it really where you know it's like i play games but oh hold on a minute i've got to make there's games a there's a huge difference in there obviously as we all know that the people that are doing games it's like it's understanding that you know the balance between you know being the consumer who likes to play games against you know being the developer yeah. you know <laughs> and so, i think a lot of people you know when you start making games especially is some some people can start disliking playing them as mm -hmm. well because you know you take a passion in making them and it's you realize the work that goes into them as well and it, it's not all about liking games and, and playing them you know we we have some students that don't really play games as much mm -hmm. but they like the art side of it or like programming you know that's absolutely fine it's it's one thing to have an interest in games which it is important because it's the industry you want to go into um but if you're passionate about the technical stuff as well that's just as important mm -hmm. I think a lot of them do, you know, ones that are really into it as well. They really come with some big grand ideas and they don't realise how, you know, the time 
that you've got to do it, but also, you know, it, it's, you know, it's having those grand, grand ideas and then not realising that it takes such a lot of hard work and more than one person to, to do it, you know. Mm. Um, so you get some really wacky kind of <laughs> game ideas, don't you, when, you, when you're doing this stuff. So he was going to say something. That's it, yeah. that's it. Um, <clears throat> right, so, you know, this is the, the journey, like, you know, good recruitment. You know, we're always a popular choice. It, it is a popular course at the college popular courses at the college we've always had decent numbers and we had a, we had a bit of a dip uh just after the, the lockdown and we and stuff obviously that was a natural thing with most places i think i think you know i know for a fact like some of the the ucas i was doing with some of the students over those times that some wanted to leave going to uni because they weren't sure whether they were going to be working remotely or working at yeah. the actual yeah. university and I dare say that might have been a case with some of the things that we I think saw. it was the, the predicted grades did a lot yeah, as well because a lot of schools yeah. retained learners yeah. for sixth form rather than coming to college. And then yeah. over that, I think that this year is where we've seen a lot of them that have dropped out of sixth form and come here mm. because they realise it's not what they want to do. And probably universities as well have seen an uptick in numbers from yeah. from people that were waiting to be back face to face with teaching as well. That's it. Yeah. Uh, retention, we do. We do retain most of the, the students. We do lose odd one or two, but generally most do go through from like level two to level three and then from level three through to the second year. And then as I say, there's a there's a majority now I've I've seen going picking uni, which you yeah. know, you can't blame them really at the end of the day. We're never gonna be uh, a college that will ever be up against most unis because purely, you know, you know it's like we have smaller amounts of computers compared to universities we have smaller groups with the h and d generally don't we it's the natural progression anyway is, especially yeah. for industry now yeah. like a lot of jobs will want them to have a degree in that subject so, you know that's that's why we structure the courses now around you know the collaborative efforts and stuff as well and try and like we said before just moving that curve to to yeah. get up to university and make them best prepared they possibly can yeah yeah uh, progression, as I say, is good. You can see there. Uh, obviously, we do send a lot of students off to staff student in other universities as well, and generally good, successful pass rates as yeah. well. So uh, <clears throat> this is how we try to get the the studio fill. Obviously, it's a very difficult thing to do, but um, you know, it's it's the way we approach it and the way we get the students to kind of work as well. So you know, having teams with the required skill set to produce a game. So that's where we went back to having that multi-skilled two or three people working together where they can come up with a full game or, you know, a vertical slice of a game, a uh, good, you know, detailed part of a game. Um, working with somebody different, they don't always get to work with the mates, unfortunately. Um, so it's, you know, that's an important thing as well is that, you, you know, I think we all, when we're younger, think we're going to be with the same mates for the rest of our lives and it don't happen, does it? You know, we always end up going in different ways. And I think, you know, taking them away from their little comfort zone of being with a friend that they can have a laugh with and that and working with somebody completely different with a different dynamic is, is something that's going to be useful for them in the future. Uh, Standardising file folding and project builds as well. So from the outset, so again, that comes back into the file repository and the project management stuff as well. Um, you know, we do kind of use Trello a lot. Um, and we started using Gantz a bit now as well for those. Some people just don't take to Trello very well, you know, or a bit lazy with it, aren't they? So, you know, we try and think of something that's a bit more visual. Um, weekly recorded meetings, that's worked quite well. That's been something that's, um, you know, been been used a lot, with, you know, where students will break out into a separate room and do a team meeting at the beginning of the week and some do a, one at the end of the week as well. Again, that kind of mirrors the kind of, you know, agile meetings and stuff yeah. that they do uh, in studios. Giving and share the responsibility, being the lead again. We've just mentioned that earlier. You know, being supportive of each other, peer, peer to peer, uh, collaborative problem solving and decision making. Um, a lot of them don't realise how much problem solving they do. And again, this comes back to you know the, the reflective journals. Is that one of the kind of criteria is, is kind of identifying areas where students have 
done problem solving and they talk about it in a lot of them just they completely. solve problems without thinking about it sometimes it. and then when does anything with games it, though yeah, it's just yeah. constant problem that's solving it, yeah. with anything you're doing but they'll miss it out in the journals in like, oh, well, think about what you yeah. did you know you did this this and this oh yeah yeah <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's the best way of helping them understand yeah. what they're learning more than anything like if you can solve a problem or show somebody how to to do something mm. within a piece of software that's how you know you truly understand it because you've identified yeah, a problem yeah. and then you can help someone else overcome that and you know that's one thing we push a lot as well to to highlight problems i've run mm. into and, and how they overcame that because if you fix a problem you're most likely going to remember how you did that and, and it builds your knowledge of that software yeah so much better yeah um obviously being respectful to one another as well and that's something obviously you'd have to really uh, be aware of if you do go and work somewhere motivating each other pushing each other some people obviously you know they, they have meltdowns and they, they don't you know they, they kind of don't work very well and obviously you've got your support there from your team you know it's uh, again that's something that does happen you know in studios uh, every suggestion counts as well you know i think i've seen points where people have come up with something and they've been completely shot down people like see no you shouldn't do that you should you know take that on board and think about how that can be used with somebody else's idea maybe and you come up come up with a completely brand new idea after that and then a five day working week you've had students that have done seven days you know that you know we're, we we not work seven days and so most of the students do a three day week now don't they yeah um so it's kind of like understanding that you have to work outside of the college as well uh, again that's that can be a big barrier for some uh something that can come here to two hours two hours and them go on forget about it you know and come back the next day um it's never going to be um like that ever uh well, I think you, that's, yeah. you know that's how we try and prep them for uni better as yeah, well is yeah. is understanding that you know you, you're in lectures for so long each week at university mm -hmm. and then you know you get set your assignments and you've got to be doing work yeah. in your own time as well in order to get the best possible grade you can mm -hmm. you know it's not a matter of just turning up doing the minimum and, and going again you need to make yeah. sure you're putting that work in and and doing as much as you possibly can. You're being trolled, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love in your trello. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, pushing this importance again. So, it's the, obviously the word we're talking about is collaboration. So, you know, breaking out of the comfort zone. So, it's pushing the need to communicate, and that's not just verbally as well. So, um, we've had students that have effectively communicated over like um, like Trello or they use Discord on yeah. the Teams and stuff like that. You know all kind of common things that you know you'd expect to be used to um nobody's going to carry you if you're down to the work you know if you might down make the efforts even though a lot of the stuff is team based in in the fmp each individual student is assessed individually as well so there's kind of no you know shying away from stuff and then somebody carrying on the shelves and then you end up in distinction because that's not going to happen Illness is a thing, but and, and buses always run late. But you know, let's not, <laughs> you know, just uh, keep using excuses not to be here. Uh, we do get that a lot. Efficiency, both inside and outside the college as well. So we've said about you know working from home, working remotely uh, for your coursework. I think a lot of them, as they've come from like courses where there's exams and they don't realise that the, this is all purely coursework and there's no exams to sit. So it's kind of getting out of that kind of mindset of I'll just do an exam and. You know, pass or fail. As I, I know for a fact there's a lot less coursework at schools now. Yeah. And I think it's something that perhaps does need to come back personally. But uh, deadlines and goals seem even more important and realistic on the FMP. Being a leader but not a boss. So I think that's, that's the barrier of, you know, taking the lead is that some people think it's just about telling people what to do and it's not yeah. really. Uh, and obviously the main thing is, is trying to get them university ready. So I think the FMP. Although the, the, the formative units are really important, the FMP actually does do more for them, uh, for, the, yeah. for, the, for the university really stuff. Does. Yeah. So our learning environment is two suites, and we just had brand new PCs yeah. delivered as well. <laughs> you know, it's only taken how long. <laughs> um, so we've got two suites, dual monitor setups. Uh, we use headsets, webcams, obviously. We did have an eSports course last year. Yeah. We didn't really this year, didn't we? Um, graphics tablets, we had a brand new set of those as well, and some obviously green screens for, for obviously what we've got here. Uh, so that's our Instagram. If you want to follow us, please do. Um, just a little note on the move to the new learning quarter as well, uh, in roughly two years' time. He's going to give us five dedicated game suites there. So we've got quite a, a presence in the new building. 
um, which will be nice, I think, for us. Again, uh, it's pushing that collaborative yeah. element as well. It's, it's building the, the square footage we've got on a campus in order to have bigger rooms, to have more group projects going on and encouraging students to work together. Um, and obviously the layout of the room and stuff is important as well, giving them space to work in groups. And, you know, that's something that, you know, we want the, the environment they're in to be inspiring as well. And I think going to university as well and the sealed facilities there, that's something, again, that, yeah. you know, it motivates them to, to work as hard as they can to get to the universities that they want. So just a little bit about <clears throat> who we've uh, worked with, really, partnered with in many ways. Obviously, we do, as I say, we do work quite closely with Staff Journey, with Dave and, and Sean, don't we? Um, so they'll come over to us. We'll go over to them for some of the taste of days. Uh, Game Dragons, the Oliver Twins, we've worked with those. We did a, a nice um, show, didn't we, before the lockdown? Yes. Um, and actually, it's a shame, really, because the Lighthouse has just recently closed down, hasn't it? Closed its doors at the Lighthouse in uh, Wolverhampton. Um, where we got a bunch of it started off as a, a kind of let's get some game developers to come and do some talks in the college and then it ended up being an external show which we put together it was a really good day um but we've you know we had like recruitment talks from playground games uh flix we did and with rare we did um quite a lot of the testing and um, probably one of the biggest test uh teams for for um, the sea of thieves arena wasn't it um, and some of the, I know some of the students in the chat were part yeah. of that as well. And I think that was a really nice experience for us. Um, and that's, but, that's what developed the collaborative yeah, approach even more as well, because yeah. we had, you know, some of the developers come over to the college and chat to us as well about, you know, mm. how they'd want to learn as well and, and what they'd like the students to know. And, you know, that's fed in, you know, each year to what we put into the, the assignments and how we structure the, the work that we do. Yeah. Uh, Jagex in the early days, we've done stuff with them and uh, Codemasters as well uh, with the F1 uh, stuff as well. M mainly on the audio side with that, although I do know some of the students have to do a bit more. Yeah, um, and I think the work experience is a big thing that motivates yeah. the students as well because they get to see, you know, inside the studio in the mm. industry and it gives them that idea of, you know, what have I got to do to get to this yeah. point and that motivation of, you know, this is what I really want to do. I think we've got a bigger challenge with that though now. Obviously, post lockdowns, I think there's going to be more of a, a kind of remote working kind of um, workflow remote studios. I mean, speak, just speaking to some of them, but they are just working at home. It's just so. adapting it now, isn't it, over yeah, the next few years? Yeah. And, and working well, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get something at least, you know, just to, just to try and you know, a bit of testing or something like that. So some of the success stories that we've had uh, over the years, and of course this is like students that we've had, students that have then gone to staff uni or other universities, and they're, they're just some of the guys that we've seen come through our doors. And it's nice to see that um, they've made quite a success of themselves. Uh, Tom's working for Rockstar still, vehicle modelling. Anthony's just gone to work at Unity. Uh, Russ worked for a VR company, I think, originally, and then he's just gone on to another game uh, company there, Metamorphic Games. And John was from many, many years ago. He set up his own studio. He went to Bournemouth, I think, um, and set up his, his own studio, which I know they're developing quite a big RPG game over the years that they've been doing it. So. It's nice to see that, you know, some of the hard work that both, yeah. you know, the college and the universities are doing to get these guys. And obviously there's many, many more. Yeah, it's nice uh, to see that list growing yeah. as well each year yeah. as well, where you see people, you know, you see them on LinkedIn or something and they've just got a job in a studio and it's nice you're a part yeah. of that, that journey with them, really. Yeah. I think LinkedIn is one of the good things to get students on as well, because I do that part of the progression module is... I think it's an important thing for them to be on. It's the most, you know, sensible social. It's another way of collaborating as well. Yeah. Like we collaborate with industry on it, and you it's know, they can the, collaborate yeah, as well. One of the best places to get jobs. I know for a fact that Flix are always advertising or say, saying these are our new people that are working uh, this week at the studio. Have we done that one already? We have. I've got that twice for some reason. There we go. <laughs> so um, yeah. Thank you for your time, guys. Um, if anybody's got any questions, I know there's quite a few popping up. I think some of it's trolling. Yeah, it's Logan and Toby. <laughs> Logan and Toby, yeah. I will add some onto the uh, this one. Was a good. Uh, this one was a good question. I'm just adding some onto the screen so you should see them pop up. <laughs> okay, so um, we've had all sorts really. I mean, we we tend to like with the level twos up until this year, they've been doing two D um side scrollers or top down games we've just made the switch to 3d this 3D, year yeah. haven't we? but the fmp especially is yeah we give them a genre and a theme to work from and then, then they come up with the idea so you know there's you know um one of them i know logan he worked on what was it project x doing that 
mm-hmm. um, that racing game did, and then there was Dead Mare, they did like the zombie <laughs> shooter game as well. They like doing that. So there's, there's always something to do with zombies or something yeah. post-apocalyptic <laughs> in some form. Or yeah, another. I mean, the, the, the level twos this year, just for the formative part, um, have, have done like a Fall Guys style game. Or working on a full oh, nice. due, due to due to finishing the end of January. I think it's just taking inspiration from what's popular in industry at the minute as well, and mm-hmm. and sort of breaking that down and seeing how you could rework it in your own way yeah. as well, and and that gives them an idea of staying up to date with what current trends are as well, um, as well as developing skills in the engines and stuff that they need. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's really good points. Um, one from me because I'm really big on like reflection and stuff like that in yeah, students yeah. as well. So obviously you said you get them to use electronic That's journals. You do a lot, isn't um, it, Dave, with them, the reflective practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean we use Adobe uh, Express uh, web page, um, which feels a good little platform really because it it's well you know I know it's like if you think about some of the art departments at the college they they just get them to do them in notebooks you know and it's it's all handwritten. Um, mm-hmm. We chose a platform obviously purely for the fact that it's it's more interactive, that it's more colourful, it's more visual, uh, and it works perfectly for us. But you know, but we have thought about other ways of, of doing you it. You know, the reflecting with purpose yeah, as well is yeah. is a massive thing because you know you get two extremes. It's either I've done really well on absolutely everything, or they completely mm-hmm. shoot themselves down on every single mm-hmm. thing that they mm-hmm. do, and they don't see the in between of yeah. oh, this is what I've done well, this is what I could have done better, and it's about striking that balance. And we try and break it down with yeah. them. Okay, what have you done well this week? What hasn't gone well this week? And then how could you overcome that problem next yeah. week? And it's it's about building that up. I think the biggest the biggest part of the reflection that gets missed is the why. It's always the why bit. Why yeah. is this? Mm-hmm. Why is that? You know, and it's they kind of skip over that bit. Yeah, no, I think that's a totally good point as well. I think, again, you've hit similar points to us where it's they have a focus on one or the other. And it's mm. like, oh, I've done great, or oh, I've just done really, really bad. And mm. no plan plan of action either for the future, which I think is really important. Um, I think we've tackled all the questions now, and it's bang on four o'clock. And I think you've actually answered most of the questions throughout the presentation anyway. So that was good. Um, so I'll finish up the stream here. So thank you both for that, because it was really, really good. Um, and people clearly enjoyed it, clearly your students enjoyed it as well. So um, thank you for that. Um, so we'll say bye now. So thank you both. Um, and thank you everybody for the questions. Bye, bye, bye. Cheers. Bye.